take my seat in the must move, then early on I'm dealt pocket 10s in the small blind. Under the gun opens at 30. What's interesting about this player is that he's the same guy who raised preflop when I got boat over boated with pocket 10s in the small blind in the previous 10-20 vlog. The hijack and button call the 30. I call for 25 more. The big blind calls. Five of us are seeing the flop. It's 10-8-7 with two diamonds. We've got three tens and four opponents on a very connected board. This is an eerily similar hand as the one that I just mentioned that didn't go well for me. I even have one of the same opponents. I check. Unfortunately, so does everyone else. The turn is the queen of spades. That's a good card in terms of helping me get value. Maybe someone has top pair. I can't let this check through again. I bet 120. The big blind folds immediately. The preflop raiser might have something like king queen or ace queen. He calls. The hijacking button fold. We're heads up. The river is the five of spades. I got a great run out from my particular hand. It's time to extract maximum value. How much would top pair be willing to call once some major draws miss like king jack and diamonds? I choose a sizing of 300. Under the gun is thinking about what to do. I said in the last vlog that he's played some of the biggest games in the world, including in Macau. He's perhaps the best player in the casino, but I'm feeling pretty good about the situation that I'm currently in. The opponent just has to see what I've got. He calls. I turn over the set. It's a winner. We get a lot of value in our first important hand of the session. It's a nice way to begin. Right away, I'm dealt pocket queens in the big blind. Under the gun plus one, who's first to act, opens to 120. His range should be narrow. I have the third best hand, yet I still don't feel comfortable three betting over an early position raiser. He can call and put me in a ton of tough spots. He's a very good pro who knows that I don't normally play these stakes. I call, hoping that this approach doesn't backfire. The flop comes 8-3-3 with two hearts. It's about as safe as it gets without making a set. I check to the preflop raiser. He might have something. He down bets to 100. I don't want to scare him off if he has air. He could just be drawing to three or even fewer outs. I call the 100. The turn is the seven of clubs. I'm glad it's an undercard to my high pair. I check. The opponent keeps the heat on. He bets 360. I've underwrapped my hand by flatting preflop and on the flop. This has caused me to be flying somewhat blind. I'm probably ahead, but after facing two bets, I can't help but wonder if maybe I'm up against a better over pair or maybe even a full house. There's no way that I'm ever folding. I call could still be up against a hand like jacks, tens, or nines. The river is the jack of clubs. One of those hands we were previously beating is now crushing us. 10-9 suited also got there to make it straight. I check to either induce a bluff from Miss Hearts or keep the pot small in case I'm up against a better hand. No check back from the opponent. He bets 800. As soon as the bet hits the felt, I grab a chip to make the call. The player has one of the hands that I was hoping he'd have. He shows pocket tens. I turn over the pocket queens. I have a hand that he definitely didn't think that I had. For him to go three streets of value, he must have thought that I had an eight other than jack eight suited. Under repping my hand goes well for the most part. I win a decent pot in the first few minutes at the table. Although, given the exact hand that I was up against, I probably would have won more if I three bet or check raise flop. Just like that, I'm already up 1,300 in addition to the 1,100 that I won earlier in 510. There's no time to worry about that. The very next hand I'm dealt king jack suited in middle position. I open to 120. The hijack calls. Cutoff calls, we're going three ways to the flop out of position. Comes 9-9-4 with two clubs. We've got a flush draw, two overs, and a backdoor straight draw. Not too bad, I bet 160. The hijack folds, and I win. At least I thought I did. I forgot Bruno is still in the hand. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I'm in here, Brad. Oh, you are, I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> the dude has a pretty great laugh. He also has something that he wants to see the turn with. He gathers chips to make the call. It's down to heads up. The dealer puts out the eight of hearts. We don't improve. I'm a bit concerned that Bruno could have a big hand. I check. Bruno is at least going to rep a big hand. He bets 460. It's kind of a tough spot. There's at least some chance that I'm drawing dead. There's also a chance that I'm up against a better flush draw. There's a chance that I'm up against a worse flush draw too. I call to see a river. The dealer puts out the three of clubs to give us the king high flush. We might have been bailed out or that might have caused us to be in even more pain. I checked to Bruno. He's bet 100% of the times that I've checked him so far today. He's not about to stop that trend. He bets 640. That's a reasonable amount. I call. Bruno has queen nine of diamonds. He flopped trips. We've got the winner for a nice pot. That gets us back over the 10K starting stack for this game. This is when Bruno gets asked a question about me filming, and he handles it like a stud. Is that the most difficult the whole pass? No, I, I, I like I like this part. I, I, no, my, my favorite part is like, oh, how much did you bet on the flop again? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. I actually, no, I actually really like that. I don't mind it at all. <laughs> I'm a detailed guy. What can I say? Whether I win or lose, I try to get everything down as accurately as possible. 
Most professionals understand that vlogs are good to help grow the game. It's especially good for the pros at this table if I can post a vlog of me winning in these stakes. That doesn't mean they're not coming after me though. I'm stuck once again on the day. At least I'm dealt some suited Broadway cards. I've got King Jack of Diamonds and the High Jack. Looks so nice. I raised a 120. The big blind is the only customer. We're heads up in position. The dealer puts out Ace-10-5, all diamonds. We flop the nuts and we've got the Royal Flush redraw. The opponent checks. My hand is almost too strong. Four of the five highest diamonds are all accounted for. There's not a whole lot that I'll be able to get called by on this board. I check back to set the trap. The turn is the eight of hearts. The big boy might have something or he could be getting out of line. He bets 320. No more slow playing for me. It's time to make a move. I raise to a thousand. The opponent doesn't look like he wants to fold. Maybe he has a smaller flush, a set, two pair. Maybe he just doesn't believe me and has one pair. The big blind calls. This has become a large pot. I'm just hoping that we get a clean run out. Instead, the river is the five of spades. It pairs the board. I no longer have the nuts. I'm having flashbacks to a session at 1020 that I recently played in which I flopped a king high flush. Someone backdoored a boat and I doubled them up. That kind of thing doesn't happen that often. I don't necessarily need to be worried about it. The big blind checks. Checking back my hand would be ridiculous. There are a variety of strong but worse hands that can call it bet. I go with my instincts that I'm best. And I make it 2,000 to mostly target smaller flushes, but also some hands like Ace-10 and Ace-8. The opponent has 4,090 total. There's only one thing that I don't want to hear, and that's... Oh. <laughs> it seems like I've fallen into my own trap. If I call, this is going to be a pot of over $10,000, by far the largest one that I've ever played. I knew it was dangerous betting because with the board pairing, not only could the opponent have improved to have me beat, but I was pretty much only repping flushes with my turn raise after I checked back the flop. Almost never have a full house given how this has been played because I would have bet flop with sets and two pair hands. My range is capped. There's a small possibility the big blind is doing this with the worst flush for value. I doubt he'd do this as a bluff, but I guess there's a tiny chance of that as well. I come to the realization that it's only about 2,000 more. I'm getting four to one, and I can't fold for that price. I guess I call him in. You got it. Yep. Yeah. I've just gotten so fucked. Goddamn. How much? Backdoor boat again. Happened to me so much lately. No bet on the flop? No bet on the didn't bet on the flop and I get absolutely punished for it. The big blind has pocket eights for a full house. He turned a set and got there on the river. I had a 97.2% chance of winning on the flop. I get a nightmare run out and I lose the maximum to get totally annihilated. I have less than 3,000 in my stack. I'm down 7,000 for this game. It's clearly not my day. I'm getting destroyed by the deck. I'm making some bad river calls. I should just go home right now. I don't think that anyone here would blame me. This will be my biggest loss ever if I pick up. Instead. I do something that I wouldn't recommend anyone else do if they were in the same shoes. I pull out 10,000 more and I double down. We pick up queen four suited in the hijack. I open to 120. Cut off calls. He's been regularly three betting me and putting me in difficult spots. I'm sure he's a nice guy away from the table, but he's been annoying to play against. And I've had enough of him. We're heads up and out of position. The flop is 10, nine, eight with two hearts. We've got a flush draw, gut shot straight draw and one over. Altogether, it's good for us. I bet 200 is a semi bluff. The player calls without thinking too long about it. If he had a straight, set, or two pair hand, he'd probably take more time and possibly would have raised. He probably has a one pair type of hand or draw himself. The turn is the deuce of clubs. That's as blank as it gets. I'm not in the frame of mind to hold anything back. And at least one of the queens is accounted for, making it less likely that I'm up against queen jack. I'm gonna rep a straight, set, or two pair hand. I make nearly a pot size bet of 700. The opponent grabs chips and flats again. If he's strong here, he's showing the patience of one of those monks who meditates so long that they turn into a mummy. I really think that he's got a hand with little showdown value at the moment. I'm not sure that I want a heart to come out because a queen high flush could be no good. The river is the four of diamonds. We make fourth pair. This is mostly a brick though. I don't want to have to rely on my pair of fours to win this. I bet 3,000 basically is a complete bluff. It's great to have a queen in my hand. It isn't all that great to have two hearts though. The opponent's a good player. He knows that I'm mostly going to have a straight or nothing in this situation. He's only going to have one pair a lot of the time. He's staring me down to try and get a read on me. It's incredibly tense when you're sitting there over betting the pot, hoping to get the largest bluff of your life through while someone's scrutinizing your every move. I'm trying not to think about the potential outcomes. It's 
it's impossible not to. This bluff is either gonna induce a fold and my stack will be at 14,000, or it's gonna fail miserably, and I'll have lost 4,000 in this hand for almost no reason, and I'll be stuck at demoralizing 11,000 in this game. My opponent is extremely skeptical, yet he eventually folds, our massive bluff gets through, resulting in us having an extra 5,000 in our stack that we wouldn't have had if we had gotten called. There's a ton of adrenaline coursing through my body. I still have work to do though. Pocket Queens, under the gun plus two. Under the gun plus one opens to 120. He's been playing pretty snug. I just flattered with Queens pre-flop before when I faced an early position raise. Here I three bet to 400. This is gonna look super strong. The under the gun straddler is named Ping. He's a great player and great guy. He's assessing the situation and appears to want to get involved in some way. If he called four bets after the first two players to act raise and three bet, he's only gonna have hands like aces, kings, and ace, king. Maybe he doesn't even four bet ace, king, or kings. He calls, which I'm happy to see. Under the gun plus one calls. We're going three ways to the flop. I haven't made any sets today in the big game. This would be a great time to hit one. I'm gonna need your help to do so. On the count of three, let's hit that like button for extra run good. Ready? One, two, Three. The flop is queen three deuce with two spades. We have top set and we're in position in a multi-way three bet pot while playing for huge amounts of money. I just want to trap this moment in a jar and come back to it when I'm feeling down because this is special for me. The opponents check. I've got the best possible hand and I even have backdoor spades to go with it. Now how do I extract the most value when opponents will probably have a lot of hands like middling pocket pairs? I bet 480 to keep one or both opponents in. Under the gun calls, he could have a hand like ace king or ace jack of spades. He could also have a hand like jacks. Under the gun plus one folds, it's heads up. Maybe I can get a clean run out this time. Nope. The dealer puts out the seven of spades. Again, I flop the nuts and I get significantly downgraded in a large pot. Three fourths of the queens are accounted for, so a flush draw seemed like the most likely hand that I would have gotten called by on the flop, especially when the opponent called with another player left to act behind him. Under the gun checks. I doubt a hand like jacks or tens can call a second barrel, and I don't want to get check raised again. I check back. The river is the six of hearts. Realistically, doesn't change anything. Under the gun bet's 500. It's a tiny amount that looks a lot like a blocker bet. I don't get the sense that he's doing this with a flush. He's probably doing this to get to showdown with a hand like ace, queen of hearts, maybe jacks or tens. There's a tiny chance that I can get extra value from one of those hands if I raise. It'll probably look bizarre after checking back turn, which could allow me to get called lighter. If I get re-raised, it'll be a disaster though. My instincts are telling me that I have the best hand and I can perhaps make a little extra profit by putting in additional money. I went with my instincts by value betting with the flush and the king jack hand earlier and I lost the absolute maximum. That hand swirling in the back of my mind. I have to forget about previous bad outcomes and try to make the best decision I can in the moment. I raised to 1700. The opponent has me beat. He might just ship it in my face. That's been happening to me a lot lately. That doesn't appear to be what's gonna occur right now. The player thinks that I might have him beat, but he can't find a fold. He puts his calling chips in front of me as if to say, I know you have the winner. I flip over the set. I imagine it's best. I'm so happy because this one would get my stack up over the 17,000 mark. Ping throws the chips that he initially bet River with over my way too. I'm feeling great. Then I realize that he hasn't returned his cards to the dealer yet. I don't necessarily have the winner. You're not going to slow roll me, are you? Ping is a class act and shows Pocket King solely for the poker vlog. He didn't have to do that and it isn't a common thing to do in high stakes, particularly after a large pot doesn't go your way. Ping had the king of spades so the turn gave him a total of 10 outs. Luckily for us, he didn't hit one and my raise on the river made me an extra $1,200. I'm only down about $2,800. It's been an incredible comeback session and it isn't even close to over. Pocket ace is on the button. The same opponent from the last hand opens to 120 from middle position. I three bet to 380 expecting to win without seeing a flop. That might be what happens in an average vlog session, but not today. The opponent four bets to 1200. He has 730 behind. It's tough for me to fathom that this is real life right now. I take a stack of yellow 1K chips and I announce that I'm all in. The player can't really fold anything given the price that he's getting. He calls. We're playing almost a 4K all in pot and the opponent asks if I want to run it multiple times. I'm not in the mood for potentially chopping the pot. Let's go once. That's right, we're going one time for all of it, and I'm glad we chose once because the flop is ace-8-3 with two hearts, we flop the nuts, the turn is the jack of spades, there's nothing to be worried about, the river is the seven of spades, the only hand that beats me is 10-9 for the straight, that's not what the opponent called a five bet shove with, we win our first all-in of the day, comes at a great time, this is an epic comeback, 
In this session alone, I went on almost a 12K downswing, which by itself would have been one of the top five worst downswings of my life. Usually when it happens, it's spread out over weeks or months, and it takes weeks or months to get all the money back. Somehow we're winning a thousand on the day due to the 510, and we're at least even in the 1020 session. Actually, we're not quite even in 1020. Remember that we're in for two 10K bullets? Well, I get a count, and I kid you not that we have 19,900 in front of us after stacking the opponent. We're 100 short. Now, how dumb is it to not walk away when I could have a win on the Bellagio trip locked up, and I could leave the 1020 table almost completely unscathed after getting torched in a $10,000 hand earlier? It's about as dumb as it gets. Who cares about booking a tiny loss at these stakes if I can cash out for 99.5% of what I bought in for after going through all this stress? The answer is me. I didn't get this far to not book a win. It's over seven hours into the session and I'm pushing it to the limit. I just need to win one small pot to finish that journey from the deepest part of Stuckville that I've ever been in and I hope to never go back there. I've been playing for seven and a half hours when I pick up queen six suited in the hijack. I open to 120. The button calls. He's the same opponent from the last hand. We're heads up out of position. The flop comes 10-4 deuce with two spades. We've got a flush draw, one over and a backdoor straight draw. I bet 200 to potentially take it down without having to make a hand. The button isn't going to let me. He raises to 600. This isn't a particularly great situation to be in. He could be doing this with some kind of better flush draw than me, like ace 3 or ace 5 of spades. It's only 400 more though. I call. The turn is the 8 of spades. We drill the third nuts. I'm still not sure if it's good. I check to see how the button's going to play this. He's not easing my concerns. He fires for 1300. I guess the button isn't worried at all about the flush draw getting there. I make another call, knowing that I could be drawing completely dead. The river is the five of diamonds. I check. This pot has gotten really big. I'm not all that comfortable. I'm even less comfortable when the button fires for $4,000. This is absolutely insane. I have the third nuts, but I feel like I have a bluff catcher. If I call, it'll be a pot of over $12,000. It'll break the record for the biggest pot that I've ever played which was $10,000 when I lost that one a few hours ago. If I win, I'll be up $3,500 for the session and $4,600 total for the day. If I lose, I'll be in the hole about $9,000 on the session. Nearly every time that I made a big river call, I've been wrong. Somehow, I haven't learned my lesson. I just don't have Amy to fold a hand that's this strong, so I brace myself for the bad news one more time, and I put in calling chips. The opponent's quick to turn over Jack Deuce's spades for a slightly smaller flush, he might like Jack Deuce suited a little too much. He gets totally punished for playing it this time. I have him notched to win by far the largest pot of my life. Excuse the language, but what a fucking wild ride today has been. I didn't think it was going to happen, but I'm all the way out of the hole. This has been the most taxing cash game session that I've ever played. I'm completely mentally drained. I can't possibly express how happy I am to come back from the dead like that and actually have a solid win. I have to give credit to the opponent because he loses a big cooler, but... Knows this is a huge moment for me, and he's very cool about it. Same, bro. Thanks, man. I've got over 23,000 in front of me. 